Many governments and scientists say we need to keep the world from warming 2 degrees Celsius. But why that number? And what happens if it does? Hey guys, Julia here for DNews. Coming up in December of 2015, the UN will host the 21st Conference of Parties in Paris. The focus of this year's COP21 will be climate change. Most of the leading nations in the world have been asked to pledge to keep the rise in global temperature under 2 degrees Celsius. It's clear that a sharp curb in CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions is needed. Unfortunately, not all countries agree on how best to go about that. There's two main plans. One says everyone gets a per capita cut. Everyone, all nations, have an equal responsibility to curb emissions. The other says that countries who polluted more in the past have more responsibility to curb their emissions so that those who polluted less can have some wiggle room to grow. But one study from the Center for International Climate and Environmental Research Oslo found that the US, EU, and Chinese emission pledges leave very little room for other countries to admit in a two-degree world. Those countries say their pledges are fair and ambitious, but might not be enough to keep things cool enough. The two degrees target was decided back in 2009 at another UN conference in Copenhagen, where in the Copenhagen Accord, countries recognized the scientific view that the increase in global temperature should be below two degrees Celsius. But why did they choose that number? Well, that number can be traced back to two papers published in the mid 70s by Professor of Economics William Nordhaus at Yale University. In these papers, he said that if there were global temperatures more than two or three degrees above the current average temperature, this would take the climate outside of the range of observations which have been made over the last several hundred thousand years. Ice core sampling in the mid 80s confirmed that two degrees above pre-industrial levels hadn't been seen on the planet in at least the last 100,000 years. Another report in the early 90s reconfirmed that the consensus that two degrees is an upper limit beyond which the risks of grave damage to ecosystems are expected to increase rapidly. Since then, that number has had huge visibility as a speed limit of sorts. As we might pass that number, the worse effects on the climate and the faster those effects will happen. Effects like global sea level rise. A study published in the journal Nature Climate Change found that levels could rise between 1.5 and 4 meters by the year 2300 if the Earth warms at least 2 degrees. The effects of which we've talked about in previous episodes. Links for those down below. Not only could oceans rise, but rivers could run dry, according to a study published in the journal Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society A. In analyzing water scarcity, researchers found that water supplies would dwindle thanks to more pressure from a growing population. If the temperatures climb even higher to 4 degrees, some riverbeds will be drier, but some might be wetter, which could put more pressure on stressed out governments. As the temperatures get worse, the effects will become more extreme. In another study also published in the same journal, researchers found other effects include no sea ice in the Arctic in the summer, coral reef die-offs, melting of permafrost, which would release more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, and a dieback of the Amazon rainforest. The study also predicts that semi-arid and arid places like sub-Saharan Africa will be even drier. They predict the collapse of the agricultural system in that region. So it's safe to say that if the world warms up as it looks like it very well might, Earth is going to look a lot different. We're witnessing one of the effects of climate change right now. Arctic ice levels have been the lowest scientists have ever seen. So what happens if all of the ice melts? Check out this video right here. Well, most of it's not good. Weather might look a little different around the world. As more of our sun's energy gets absorbed into the oceans, it would change the way air moves around the atmosphere in the Arctic and could even change the position of the jet stream. What changes have you noticed? Perhaps longer summers? Tell us about it down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss a single DNews episode.